My people, what's going on? Welcome to One Verse Thursdays, our noonday time to take a break from work, from life, and invest a few moments together in community in God's Word. I'm your pastor, Pastor Richard Martin, and I thank you so much for taking your bowl of beans and rice, taking your hot pockets, your two-day-old pizza, or your freshly made meal. I don't want to come at you. Whatever you're eating, if you're kicking back in your living room, if you're at work, I want to thank you for hopping on and spending some time together. Shout out to Jamaica. What's going on, my sister? It's good to see you. Today, we've got a great verse, a single passage of scripture. One verse Thursday, our philosophy is this. If you get into God's word, we believe that one verse has enough power and potency to change your attitude. And if it can change your attitude, it can change your day. One verse of scripture, just a single verse, can change your heart. And in changing your heart, it can change your life. This is our fourth week. Can you believe we've been at this for one month already? We started off in the beginning of the Bible, the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1-1. Then we skipped a whole lot of real estate and landed in Colossians 2-3. Last week, we were in Philippians 4-8. And this week, we have another powerful verse that we hope and pray blesses you and ministers to you. Before we hop into the verse, I just want to share a few things with you. After we are done on this episode of One Verse Thursdays, go check out and catch up on our B series, Rediscovering Your Spiritual Identity. Today's message is powerful. The Bible says, and the little children shall lead them. It also says from the lips of children, God has ordained praise. One of our little friends, five years old, was kind enough to send us a word on being joyful. So if you've been feeling a little down, feeling deflated, feeling out of sorts, go get this 45 second injection of joy from one of my little friends. I don't think you'll regret it. The second thing I want to share with you, and I'm not trying to be vain at all, this is a testimony. If you guys were hopped on, if you guys hopped on my IG live story a couple weeks ago, I was trying to cut my hair and I tried it again, brought the beard down a little bit, brought down the chin hair here. I'm still working on the lineup, trying to get that thing crisp, but I'm working on it and I'm getting better at it. Now you might be saying, Pastor Martin, that, that, that has no relevance to One Verse Thursdays. You're probably right, it might not, but I want to share it with you anyways, because we're family and that's what family does. All right, well, listen, let's hop into God's word today. I'm excited to share this one verse with you. I hope it's something that can be a blessing to you and that you can transport and transfer and share with someone else. But before I do that, what's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? I see y'all hopping on. It's good to see you. What's up, Nelly? Listen, I cannot wait until we can travel again because I have a friend. You need to follow Nelle Na, N-E-L-E underscore N-A-H. She is a master baker. Check out her page. Anytime I see it, I just get jealous. I really do. Um, if th there's going to be a way, I'm convinced, where you can like air mail pastries and when you get it, it, it still tastes amazing. That day's going to come. I don't know when it is, but until then, keep baking. Also, follow my girl, Janae K, Janice Dickerson, J-E-A-N-N-E-K-A-Y-Y. -N -N -E -Y. Follow her and check out the powerful and wonderful things Simply Service is doing out west. It is a powerful nonprofit organization that is making waves out west and really around the nation. So check her out. I don't think you will regret it. Let's go to God's word. We're going to go to the book of Malachi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. It is the last book, the last major word of prophecy given to Israel before what we call the intertestamental period, a period of about 400 years between the end of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament. So we're going to go to the last book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi. It's four chapters. You could really read this entire book in one sitting, but we're going to go to the last chapter of the last book of the Old Testament. And the verse we're going to read is verse number two, Malachi chapter four, verse two. 
Now, not too many people have this verse memorized, but I'm sure more of us have at least heard it or heard portions of it alluded to before. So I'm going to read it in your hearing, and then we'll receive the principle from this passage, and then we'll have a word of prayer. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Here's what the Bible says. Malachi 4, verse 2. But for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Stick with me. Don't give up on this one verse. In first hearing and in first reading, you might be saying to yourself, hmm, I don't know about this one verse, but stick with it. Malachi 4.2, one more time. God is speaking, but for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing. I love that word. In its rays, other versions say with healing in his wings. And you will go out and frolic or leap like well-fed calves. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2 presents this very powerful image of blessing for those persons who are in right relationship with God, who are in relationship with God. And the image is this. It's the image of a new morning, the rising sun, and the higher it rises, the longer its rays extend and stretch over all of the land under its surveillance. Drawing on this image of a rising sun, that the higher it rises, the further its rays or arms or wings stretch out, the further its light reaches. What God is saying to us is, that's how I want my healing in your life to be. When you are in relationship with me, I will give you healing that gets better and stronger and extends further the higher I rise in your life. So as I'm really, as I'm reading this passage of scripture, and this is one of my approaches that I share with you, whenever you come to a single passage of scripture, what you're asking God is, Lord, what's the principle within this passage? What is it that help, allows me to hang on, plug into, anchor deep into this passage that can have value and meaning for my attitude, for my day, for my heart, for my life? Here's the passage as I put it in, in my words, and I want you to write in the comment what you hear from it. The principle is this. Your healing is in God's hands. Your healing, my healing, our healing is in his hands. Malachi 4.2 again says, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Now, let me ask you all this. Have you ever been in need of healing? I know that many of us have wounds that need healing. Some of them are fresh wounds, but others of them are old wounds. There are wounds of the mind. Wounds of our hearts, wounds of the spirit, our emotions have been wounded. Some of our wounds have deep roots in childhood, while others of them are recent, even in adulthood. But here is the promise of Malachi 4, 2. Our healing is in God's hands. Now, let me give you two illustrations of why that's a blessing for me and so powerful for me. The first one is in childhood. Whenever I was sick, whenever I had a cold or the flu and I needed healing, I would go to my mother and my mother had a medicine, a medicine cabinet filled with all kinds of medicine. Some of them, and I think I have a witness out there, did not taste good at all. I'm talking about Pepto-Bismol, Robitussin, real bitter aftertaste. Listen, even though it didn't taste good, I knew it was good for me. And so she would open up the bottle, pour it into a spoon and say, Richie, say ah, and take all of it. My healing was in her hands. But there's another illustration that blesses me about this principle that my healing is in God's hands. And it is the first time. All right, don't blush. Don't get shy. Don't, don't log off now. Just go ahead. Be, you might be by yourself, but, um, but um, I think you'll plug into this. God's healing is in his hands. The first time you ever held hands with that significant other. 
how did you feel? Come on now. You had been watching him. She had been watching you. You all had begun to talk and you all were friends and people would ask you, what's going on with you all? And oh, nothing's going on. I don't know if it was on some kind of high school trip and you guys were riding down next to each other in the bus or maybe you all were sitting in church next to one another or taking a walk in the park. And then you guys begin to do that whole, you know, and then all of a sudden those hands met and then the fingers interlock and those feelings just flooded your body. <laughs> Yeah, when those hands came in contact. So, so I think when, when Malachi 4.2 talks about healing in God's wings, it's that feeling of, of hands coming in contact with one another that signifies relationship and trust and dependence and safety and security. You don't just hold hands with everybody. That's right. Those butterfly feelings filled your stomach. You kind of were all nervous. You didn't know what to do. Malachi says this, when we are in relationship with God, when we have our hands intersected with his hands, we find that there's healing in the hands that we're holding. This is why it's so not just great or good. It's, it's downright cool and amazing to be in a relationship with God because when I'm holding his hands and he is holding my hands, I get the healing that is in his hands and I'll be the first to raise mine and say, there's some healing that I need that are in his hands. And I have a suspicion, something within me just tells me that you can relate to that. And I want you to be encouraged that earth has no sorrow, as the old song used to say, that heaven can not heal. Whatever your hurt is, the healing is in his hands. Malachi 4.2, but for you who revere or fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you will go forward frolicking like a well-fed calf. I want you to be encouraged today, my friends, that no matter your hurt, God has healing because your healing is in his hands. Maybe today is the first day for you to make that choice. God, I want my healing. And I recognize that my healing is in your hands. So what I want you to do today is make the decision for the first time. And if you need to make this decision for another time, maybe you've made it a while ago, maybe you made it yesterday, maybe you made it this morning, at this noonday hour, make the decision to put your hands in the hands of of God and trust and believe that in his hands rests your healing. God will enable you to have that forgiving heart. God will bring you the reconciliation that you need. God will help you to let go of guilt, shame, and regret because of choices that you are disappointed in yourself for. Your healing is in his hands. Maybe you did not get the job. Maybe you're struggling in school. Perhaps there are other emotional and mental things you're wrestling with simply because of the times in which we're living. Your healing is in God's hands. And finally, let's expand it. The healing the world needs is in the hands of God. In the United States right now, we're in a campaign season. It's a kind of divisive political season right now. Each party is having their conventions and there's infighting and the climate is at an all-time high. There's unrest I believe that the healing this nation needs and this world needs rests in the hand of God. If you feel comfortable today saying publicly, I believe my healing is in God's hands, I just want you to write healing in the chat. Just write healing. Just write healing as an indication that you want the healing for your life that is in God's hands. I don't need to know where you need to be healed. That's between you and God. I don't need to know the nature of your hurts. God knows that. I simply want to share this message from this one verse, Malachi 4.2, that when our hands are in his hands, we find that our healing is in his hands. And I believe that God's healing is the very healing that we need. I want to pray for us all 
myself included, that this will not just be a Thursday word, but that every day when we see the sun, we'll be reminded that just as the sun rise and extends its rays over the land, so God's healing can take control in our lives and increase in its power and its liberating strength day by day. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, you are our God. And today we make a choice based on the invitation of Malachi 4.2 to clasp hands with you. Just like the first time we held hands with that significant other and our, and our stomachs were filled with those butterflies, there was a sense of rest and security and connection that happened almost instantly so that is the promise for you, from you to us, for those who are in relationship with you. When our hands are together, you get the healing that comes from my hands. And Father, I believe in my heart of hearts that all of us have somewhere in our lives brokenness, disappointments, frustrations, hurts, and wounds that no one else can heal but you. And so you've seen those persons who have simply said, healing, Lord, I need your healing. Touch me, hold me. Wrap your arms, your loving wings, your strong presence around me that I might be healed. There's a song that says there's healing for your sorrows, healing for your pain, healing for your spirit. There's shelter from the rain. There is a balm in Gilead. And oh God in heaven, we thank you in this moment, this noonday, that the rest of our day will be better. Our attitudes have been strengthened. Our hearts have been changed and our lives will be better because we have found our healing in your hands. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I'm so glad that we've had this time together. One verse this Thursday, Malachi 4, verse 2. Spend some time reading it in different versions. Journal it. Send a text message to someone. Go on you version and get an image and post it on your social media accounts and let other people know that their healing is in God's hands. I hope that you've been blessed and I hope that as we go forward, we might continue to experience the healing that God has for you. To all my people in the States, South Africa, Jamaica, near and far, I love you and we'll see you all next Thursday for our next installment of One Verse Thursdays. God bless you. We'll see you next time.